Good evening all. Welcome to this session. We will try to see nephroblastoma versus neuroblastoma differentiating points. Coming to the first case, 3 year old boy presented with incidental painless palpable abdominal mass. Here you can see there is a heterogeneously hyponancing mass lesion noted typically in the left kidney and the mass lesion is showing claw sign with that of the adjacent renal parenchyma. So you can see a thin rim of renal parenchyma around the mass lesion making sharp angles with that of the mass lesion. And also this heterogeneously hyperancing mass lesion is extending along the left renal vein into the IVC. So clearly you can see there is a filling defect noted in the IVC. So this is a classical case of nephroblastoma. And also I will see class sign. Here also there is other coronal sections where you can see there is a mass arising from the kidney. And also you can see there is a there are sharp angles between the mass and the kidney. So whenever you see whenever there is a mass originating from the organ and if there are sharp angles adjacent to the mass then this mass is probably arising from the organ of origin and whenever there is an extrinsic mass with no sharp angles then this mass will be probably outside the origin organ of origin and it's only abutting or displacing the organ of origin so claw sign is one of the important sign which helps in differentiating nephroblastoma from neuroblastoma and also it can be also helps in differentiating meningioma versus intraaxial brain tumor and also it can helps in differentiating renal angioma lipoma versus retroperitoneal liposarcoma so these are the three uh, areas where claw sign helps in differentiating here also you can see there is other lesion this is also other case where you can see there is a large heterogeneously hyper heterogeneously enhancing mass lesion uh, showing necrosis extending along the left renal vein and also there is a tumor thrombus in the ivc and probable metastasis in the liver so these are different cases of nephroblastomas so that is the class sign and so what are the differential diagnosis it can be wilms tumor cystic partial differential nephroblastoma neuroblastoma clear cell sarcoma renal or rhabdo tumor renal medullary carcinoma childhood renal cell cancer and ossifying renal tumor of infa infancy these are the differential diagnosis we can consider in this case so basing upon the age you can see wilms tumor is most common between peak incidence is between 3 to 4 years and mostly 90 percent will be unilateral and 10 percent can be bilateral if in 6 to 8 months you can suspect bilateral nephroblastomatosis which is typical in subcapsular location renal cell carcinoma is very rare in a younger age group and other one is rhabdoid tumor i have already told is associated with a typical rhabdoid teratoma in the brain typically in the postrophosa and sometimes clear cell sarcoma which is also a skeletal metastasis and ossifying renal tumor of infancy is nothing but it is a ossifying mass and it typically extends into the renal pelvis and sometimes mimics diagon calculus so these are the differential diagnosis according to age next coming to Wilms tumor it is uh, nothing but presents as a painless abdominal mass third most childhood renal mass after hydronephros and multicystic dysplastic kidney most common malignant abdominal neoplasm between 1 to 8 years of age and Wilms tumor peak incidence is between 3 to 4 years of age. Metastasis is most common to lung followed by liver and lymph nodes. And even MRI can better demonstrate the tumor thrombus into the renal vein and IVC and lymph nodal enlargement. So coming to syndromes associated, overgrowth syndrome is typically W2T2 gene that is beckwith Widman syndrome. And non-overgrowth syndrome is WAGR syndrome. So it is Wilms, Eneridia and genitourinary abnormalities and mental retardation. So that is uh, non-overgrowth syndrome. So, staging the nephroblastoma, stage 1 is tumor limited to the kidney, stage 2 tumor extends beyond the kidney and infiltrates into the structures, stage 3 there can be incomplete excision or tumor rupturing into the peritoneum, uh, uh, peritoneal surface, stage 4 there will be hematogenic metastasis and stage 5 there will be bilateral neurotumor set diagnosis. So, this other case where you can see there are, uh, on MRI you can see typical restricted diffusion and DWI noted in the subcapsular location and which are showing hyperperfused areas on microflow imaging. So this is a classical case of bilateral nephroblastomatosis. So nephroblastomatosis on MR typically show restricted diffusion with low ADC values. And this is a precursor for Wilms tumor. So we should closely follow up these type of cases. Coming to the next case, this is two year old child presented with severe abdominal distension and abdominal pain since two months. Here you can see there is a large soft tissue density mass lesion noted in the right hypochondrium reaching out to the right lumbar region, displacing the bowel loops inferiorly. There are few calcifications noted in the eccentric uh, eccentric of the lesion, which is causing bulging of the flanks with loss of properitoneal fat planes. And also you can see there is L5 vertebral body is not clearly visualized. On lateral radiograph, clearly you can see there is destruction of the L5 vertebra. 
so on ultrasound you can see there is a large heterogeneity hypoechoic mass lesion uh, and also it is crossing the midline onto the left side and showing raised vasculite and color doppler here also you can see there is a large soft tissue density lesion with multiple punctate calcifications and which is crossing the midline and on IV contrast you can see it's showing heterogeneous enhancement with areas of necrosis and it is crossing the midline behind the iota causing elevation of the iota from the vertebra even reaching up to the left kidney next this is also coronal sections you can see this is a large heterogeneous enhancing mass lesion displacing the right kidney completely inferiorly crossing the midline and all there is complete destruction of the alpha vertebral body and also it is causing encasing the major vessels but not invading the vessels and also it's causing elevation of the iota and vessels away from the vertebra here also you can see the lesion is typically located in paravertebral location and the lesion is extending from the abdomen into the chest in the along the paravertebral location and also abutting the spleen and left kidney. So this is a case of neuroblastoma with bony metastasis. So we will try to differentiate neuroblastoma from nephroblastoma. This is the important gist of the uh, uh, lecture. So neuroblastoma it is common less than two years. Nephroblastoma it is older that is greater than three years, peak between three to eight years. Neuroblastoma is always unilateral whereas nephroblastoma is bilateral in case of 10% of cases. Neuroblastoma it is a painless abdom painful abdominal mass whereas nephroblastoma is a painless abdominal mass so it is detected very late and typically presented with no symptoms. Calcifications are very common 80 to 90% in neuroblastoma where they are less common in nephroblastoma. Tumor margins it is purely mar poorly marginated and extension to the chest is classical neuroblastoma whereas nephroblastoma is well circumscribed with class sign as we have already described. Vessel involvement in neuroblastoma encases the vascular structures but does not invade them. It elevates the iota away from the vertebral column presenting as floating iota. Most commonly crosses the midline especially behind the iota. So neuroblastoma crosses the midline behind the iota. Whereas nephroblastoma displaces adjacent structures, insinuates between them, crosses the midline anterior to iota. Whereas nephroblastoma crosses mostly anterior to iota. It invades the vascular structure and typically invades into renal vein and IVC. Metastasis is most common in bone and bone marrow in case of neuroblastoma, liver and lung are less common whereas lung is the most common primary site, site for metastasis in case of nephroblastoma and others are local regional lymph nodes. Syndromes, Opsoclonus and Myoclonus syndrome is classical associated with neuroblastoma, others are Hutchinson's, Pepper, Blueberry Muffin, Proptosis and typically these present whenever there is orbital metastasis they present as periorbital ecchymosis or raccoon sci. Whereas in nephroblastoma, there will be big with Whitman syndrome and Wagner syndromes. And diagnostic checks are vanil mandelic acid and homovanilic acid or HVA. These are nothing but raised catecholamines in the neuroblastoma. And MIBG scan is pathognomonic. Which are these VMA or HVA, VMA or HVA are not elevated in nephroblastoma and PET CT can be used in metastasis. Origin neuroblastoma is arising from sympathetic nervous system and majority from chromosome 1p deletion and nmyc amplification whereas nephroblastoma arises from mesodermal precursors that's metanephros and gene loci are typically on chromosome 11 and chromosome 17 thank you all these are the important differentiation points which can be differentiating nephroblastoma from neuroblastoma